I'm Jay, K6RUB, and welcome to my ham shack. <clears throat> I'm doing a little demo today on the Kenwood TS590SG and its ability to link up to a PC computer. I've done a lot of experimenting over the last year with this since I've had this radio, and a while back at the early part of this last year, I got all fine fine tuned just the way I wanted it, and it's been running quite well the entire year. Uh, there's a few things that you're going to need if you intend to do, do this. One is obviously a computer and a screen and all that kind of stuff. But as far as the ability to be able to communicate between the computer uh, and the PC, or I mean between the PC and the radio and the other applications, uh, we need to be able to share a port if we're going to do more than one thing. Now, if you just want to control your radio, uh, with Kenwood's proprietary uh, so software, or any other for that matter, I guess, um, you don't need port sharing. But if you want to add on some things, like being able to, to have a, an SDR radio where you can click on the screen and it tunes your Ken Kenwood, or if you want logging software that will automatically get the information from the radio as far as band and fre frequency and whatever other information you need for your logging, uh, then you need to port share if you want everything to work together. Uh, port sharing uh, is, was a utility that will uh, allow multiple programs to access the same port. So the, Ken, the Kenwood runs on port number one, that doesn't really make any di difference I guess, and all the other three access that same, that, that same port through, th through another one. Um, it may sound confusing, but once you get the software, <coughs> you, you, you will understand. So it's basically like, a, like a, a, in this case, a, a, well, a three-way uh, 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 road. You get to where, where this road comes down, all three of these roads are going to connect to it. All right, so it's as simple as that. Uh, you need one other utility, and that's called OmniRig. And that's so... Uh, these can send information uh, to change uh, frequencies and stuff to to the uh, to the uh, uh, radio here. Um, I'm not fully versed on Om OmniRig. It's been quite a while since I set it up. I do know that it's needed uh, if you want to do what we're doing here. And that later in another video, we'll put together how this exactly all goes together and works. Uh, but in the meantime, let me give you a quick demo here. I got the mouse here, and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna run it across the screen of the uh, of the SDR rate radio. Oh, l l let me just say one thing: the only connection between the Kenwood and the PC it was a USB print a printer cord. That's all that's necessary. Uh, looks just like looks looks just like this. Uh, it goes from here to the computer, and that's all that's all you need. The rest is done internally in when the computer, with the exception of the SDR radio, that's a little black box that's sitting back there behind the, uh, behind the computer. Um, this screen you see right here, this this is this radio here. That's 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 what you're seeing. E everything on, on the screen comes from the SDR, uh, but it's uh, but the antenna that the SDR is using uh, is going uh, is the same antenna that the uh, that the Kenwood is was using. Uh, the antenna connection, the antenna port from the SDR is con is connected to the DRV port in when the back of the Kenwood, and that's where it gets its uh, RF signal from. Okay, so I guess that's pr pretty clear. When you go to transmit on the transmitter, it it uh, it cuts out the s signal to the SDR, so we don't burn it out with a or 200 or whatever watts of power. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, let's see how this works. I'm going to uh, turn up my volume and we're going to run the mouse across the screen here as you can see. I'm going to go to a, sig a signal. Here's a pretty good strong, strong one. I'm going to click on it and find to tune it. It's as easy as that. Now if I want to go to somewhere else on the band, remember this is the entire uh, single side band portion of the 20 meter band. Let's move over here. And we clicked on another one. <coughs> and do that across the band. <coughs> now 
No, I'm fine tuning that with the mouse wheel. That's pretty cool. Now, <coughs> excuse me. I want you to no notice that when I clicked on the screen, change frequency here, you ch change it here, you change it up here, and it populated the, fre uh, the frequency cell in the uh, in uh, the logging pro uh, pro program. <coughs> All this is done because we have a USB cable from Kenwood to the computer, and all of these are connect, connected virtually through through the same port well, that this is at. <coughs> I want you to notice that if I turn the dial here, <coughs> the numbers change here. <coughs> oh, so sorry, I got a tickle on my throat. So everything will change. Everything change with changes everywhere. It's all interconnected. Sometimes there's a little bit of a lag, but that's only because, you know, things take a little bit of time as it works, works through and it goes to the port and, you know, and all the silly stuff that it has to do. Uh, I hear someone calling C a Q. Okay, so that gives you an idea how or what you can do. Now, I can hook more up to that same port. I'm, I'm, well, I'm not limited to just these three. Um, if I wanted to have some uh, digital so software hooked up here and want to have it interact uh, with, the Ken with the Kenwood, I can do that. I just tell it to go to the port that I have assigned that's a virtual port. It'll, it'll, all, it'll all work fine. Then it's just a matter of setting up the parameters of what has to be set, set up internally in the, in the Kenwood and in the software. You know. I'm not saying it's really easy to do, but it should be e easy enough to do if you, you know if you have someone you can call up or message or text uh, that can give you some computer advice if you're not uh, uh, super P P P PC involved, in which I'm not. And unfortunately, I what I have a son who's an IT administrator, and, and he has helped me out with some of the internal PC things that I didn't understand. Like I wasn't completely sure how a, a port thing of a port utility was going to work so he kind of gave me a rundown on how it did but once it did boy I found that it was really easy to do and, and this really works uh, one thing I will say that if and when you do try to do this you start off with just the transmitter and just the control software and if you're gonna get a kick in would highly recommend theirs I've been through a lot of others, uh, Ham Radio Deluxe and a lot of those uh, other ones. I found them to be ineffective. They don't go deep enough into the men menu. And Ham Radio Deluxe, I'm not here to bad, bad mouth them, but my personal experience with, with it was it was cumbersome. Uh, you can make your own choice choices. I think there's free copies out there. And I think there's one you could buy for a year for $100. I, well, I don't know. So... <clears throat> There is, again, there's no charge where to this software, there's no charge for this software, and as far as N3FJP's uh, logging pro program goes, he has a nominal charge. It's the best software in the world. I tried them all. It really is the best. And the fun thing, or the good thing about the, uh, the Kenwood so software is everything that is in the internal men menu here that you would normally have to push buttons and, and twist styles and look at a little thing down here on, on the screen, uh, to figure out what you're doing is all up here on the computer. It's all a mouse click away, maybe two mouse clicks away, but it's really easy to find. And I don't know about everybody else, but I can't set this menu on this one to fly. It's very hard. Uh, if I want to just increase my um, well my power out, I just go here and I click and I and I pick whatever I want on the men when, when the menu, and that's what my power out is going to be. Uh, I don't always run it at 100 watts. I'm usually down at 70 or 80 watts because I'm pumping it into an amplifier and I don't like to overdrive the amp. So uh, with all that said, I don't know if there's much more I can add to it. I, I guess in a later video, I'll try to get more into the specifics on exactly how this is hooked up and the internal settings that you need to uh, set uh, your Kenwood for so it will actually speak back and forth. Uh, not everything likes the baud rate that this wants to default to, so you may have to set that. Maybe a couple other little things that you have to set for it to get working. Uh, but I guarantee to you that with a little bit of effort, you'll have it working and a little bit of time, uh, you'll be able to do what I'm doing here or more. Uh, so thanks very much for your time today. And let me add, 
it's never too late to welcome home a Vietnam vet. So when you see one, just walk up to them and say hi and say welcome home. So with that said, uh, 73s, guys.